Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Thanks for stopping by. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the little notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. And if you hit the little like button, we appreciate that too. Well, I've got a few things to discuss here. What can I talk about? Um, I try to include people in whatever it is I'm doing with bikes. In other words, um, it's not in any really prescribed given order. It's just happening as life happens and as these things happen and as I try to maintain my own machines and help somebody out once in a blue moon. I say once in a blue moon because I am retired. Anyway, so I try to do those things and, and that's what we're doing. Now, I've been involved in a couple of things here lately. This, this, this one we've done two videos on. This is my knucklehead. And I'm having the age-old problem of oil puddling in the top end and leaking out and making a mess. And it's been difficult. I've tried a number of things. I'm going through the book. I'm doing it as per as per the fix-it things from Easy Rider magazine, as per the things that Harley put in their own service manual. But I'll go through it quickly just for fun and, and explain where I'm at at this point. If, if this really doesn't do the trick, then the next thing is pull the heads off and find out why. See, the oil to the top end comes up out of the cam cover through this line and all the way up to both rocker boxes. What this does is it oils the rocker arms and shafts and all the little pieces that go up and down and roundy round in there and and then the oil kind of tends to puddle into the into the the tins that go around here. The knucklehead has all these pieces here that cover up the rocker arms and shafts and all those parts in there, the valves and the valve springs are in these biggest parts of these covers. Now, when the oil gets into those, then it goes through some tubes and back through here. You see these two lines on each head and they go they come out of the tins and then all and they're welded, they're permanent there and they come all the way up and then into the back side of the rocker box through these fittings. Now, the way that happens is not through gravity because it has to come up vertically up this line and back into here same thing over here you can see how these hook on and all that sort of thing and then the oil goes back down the push rod tubes back into the motor well in order to get that oil to come up there and do that the pistons going down in the position of the breather gear decides it exactly when that happens. Now when the pistons go down, of course it sucks all that air. You're talking 74 cubic inches of air. So it's sucking all that air from, and, and it's going to suck that oil right back down into the lower end. So we're counting on vacuum. This is being a knucklehead. This is, this is Harley's first all overhead valve production bike. And these are the things that they did and the way they built it. And for all of you who think that that's a complicated old bunch of junk, you might be kind of right, but at the same time, there is nothing runs like a knucklehead. If you ever have the opportunity to ride one and you've never ridden one, don't pass it up, especially if it's a good running one. A good running knucklehead is, is something to really get excited about. So anyway, that's how that's working. What happens is if for some reason that oil doesn't get sucked back in there, then what happens is it just sits on the top and finally leaks out around all these places. That's where we get antique and primitive is, is when we start expecting all of this stuff to seal up. It's not expected to seal up. Harley never expected it to seal up. But, there, but the suction pulling that oil back down takes care of all that. 
So that's the way it is, and it's not doing it as well as I'd like it to. Now, I've tried a couple of methods, and I finally got down to where I've been before on knuckleheads, and it's worked before. And what you do is a, the service manual actually says to get a length of throttle wire and route out those tubes. This is a throttle wire out of a Harley. That's uh, for those of you who've never seen one. This is for the internal throttle. This is the piece that moves up and down the handlebar and moves that solid wire to open and close the carburetor. Being that it's a nice stiff wire, no need for a throttle return spring. This thing will stay wherever you set it. Anyway, so I have this and I measured it and it was 45 thousandths. Then I got out my can of safety wire, which is 30 thousandths, and I routed it with one size and then the other. What happens is the lines, these metal lines, get too close to the cylinder head. Cylinder head gets hot and it cooks the oil in that line. And I did actually find that this front one was not open as clearly as I thought it should be. And I did. I routed it with wires. I did all of that. And then I got my uh, air hose. And I got in there with that. And I, I blew air through them. I've run wires through them. I've done everything imaginable through them. So I'm satisfied that those lines are clear. Okay, so those lines being clear and the breather valve being on function, everything should now handle that issue. If it doesn't, then I'll get back into it, just like anything else. So that's basically it. I did show that this one is open. Did we get a really good shot of that? So it's kind of neat to be able to see a knucklehead and a rocker arm. And you can see here's the valve keeper here and, and all that fun stuff. Valve collar and, uh, and what the knuckle looks like with its fittings here and all that sort of thing. They're, like I said, they're a little complicated, but not bad. And well worth it. You know, I use this thing just for going out and blasting around the neighborhood, going a few towns over to visit different people. And I don't use it for real long trips because it isn't comfortable enough. And I don't have the heart to change the looks of it. I really love the way it looks. And I love riding it. I'm a little old to be riding on this, but uh, I do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, it's an awful lot of fun to ride, and I love to ride it to shows, I too. I chase you down and listen to you. I can hear you laughing over the sound of the knuckle. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me happy. It makes me real happy. Anyway, so that really takes care of that. Um... Let's see, I did want to mention that, uh, I probably mentioned it in the last video, but I'm still going to keep doing it. Chopper Fest, which is in Ventura, California, uh, is going to happen February 12th. They gave a new date for it because on the day they had originally planned to have it, it was scheduled to rain. Somebody bigger than us scheduled it, and they really let it rain. So anyway, so it's going to be February 12th in Ventura. Hopefully, I'll get to see some of you folks that are watching this video at that party. Because to me, Chopper Fest is like a party. That's a really fun time. Speaking of parties, last night, cameraman Mike and I were invited to a party. Mm -hmm. And we went to a Christmas party. Now, I think a lot of you probably know who he is or know him personally. But Al Korf, Six Cycles. Al invited us, he and his lovely wife invited us to their Christmas party at their home. And they invited so many of the usual suspects. It was a great party. There were so many people there that were so interesting. You know, they weren't all like us. They were all like them. Everybody was whoever they are from wherever they are, and they were the nicest bunch of people I have there ever seen. There like us. There was Slim. Oh, yeah, Slim. Slim that built the... Uh, Slim's been a buddy of mine for years. Slim is the one who built that really wild three-cylinder, two-stroke trike, the all-wheel drive trike that was at uh, Born Free in California. Yeah. Only Slim could have built something like that. What a brain. Guy is insane, but he was a lot of fun last night. 
And I must say, and I hope this is not in any, any kind of bad taste, but it was the nicest, biggest bunch of beautiful women I think I've ever seen. It was a really, really oh, yeah. nice. They were. They were just wonderful. Everyone was friendly. Everyone had a wonderful time. It was that party will go down in history, I think. And mm -hmm. I really felt honored to be invited to it. Other than that, let's see, we took care of Chopper Fest. And I did want to mention, which I already have, you want to... Uh, Give a quick shot at the, the new t-shirt we've been showing off. And you can find those on our website. Just go pacificmike.com and you can order them at that website. And that's, of course, a picture of Baby Doll, my little panhead, which I am also in love with. But anyway, I think that pretty much does it for now. If this, I mean, you don't need to see me put all this back together. It's going to take me a couple hours to get everything fitted and put back together. And I think I'll do that and have it going by tomorrow. Hey, um, we so want to show these pieces. Show them why they're called tins. Well, they're called tins because they're just sheet metal. Okay, this goes on right here. Okay, that goes on right there and covers that. And... There's a gasket that goes in there, of course. Let me get that out of there. My throttle cable's in the way. There's the gasket. And here is a piece. I don't know what you call it. You could call it a stiffener or something. It goes on the bottom of this tin. That's what the tin, screws hold on to. And the screws go right through. To, yeah, I guess that's a row of nuts. There you go. Show them the screws. Yeah. Well, these are just little sheet metal screws. That surprised the heck out of me. Why? Well, I... Because I'm used to... Big art, things? I'm used to art technology, and that was the best they had it then. Well, sure. They work fine. Like I said, until that oil starts to puddle, and that's, that's a whole different ball game. You know, and this knuckle is such a pain to keep clean anyway. Gosh, and most people say, well, why would you want to keep it clean? Because it makes me happy. Beautiful. I love to look at it. But anyway, there it is. That's all of it. I can't think of anything else I really wanted to show here. I think that's pretty much it. So until next time, that's, that's another thing I want to mention. I've had a lot of people say, Mike, how come you ever don't ever do anything with a cast iron sportster? Mm. Okay. Okay. I met this lady. I had, I don't know how many people call me, asked me to bail this lady out with the problem she's having for her sports, with her Sportster. It's a 74 kick only XLCH Sportster, 1974. She bought it brand new in 1974 and she's riding it. She's having problems with her clutch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that clutch apart and see what I find in it. I will take it apart in the next few days. But uh, last night, since we were at Al's place anyway, I borrowed one of those tools, one of those long ones for taking the clutch apart on a cast iron Sportster. It's the only thing that has that clutch is that cast iron Sportster. So I can say, okay, we are officially working on a cast iron Sportster. So we'll probably do that now, next, if all goes well. And uh, until then, I'll see you out on the road.